Thanks to the Cork Sailor, who wants to know a little bit more about CMYK versus RGB and how to convert those in InDesign and Photoshop. So to get started, RGB is what we're most familiar with. Uh, why? Because it's used on the screen. It's what our televisions and our computer screens use to display the colors. It's also the richest color mode that we have and it's what we see on the web because that's what's being displayed on our computer screens. So think web graphics as RGB and CMYK is used for print. So if you're trying to decide between the two, CMYK is for your print projects and RGB is for your web projects because they will be displayed on the screen and the other will be actually displayed on something, a piece of paper probably, something printed. So that's the difference between the two in a nutshell. But CMYK is also a duller color mix. Uh, we don't have the, vi the vibrant colors that we have with RGB because RGB is actually additive colors. If you take those three colors together and combine them equally, you would get white. And that's what you see here. And with CMYK, if you do the same thing with your cyan, magenta, and yellow, you would actually get black. Now, in a perfect world, that would be so, but you actually don't get black. You get more of a muddy brown, dark color. So printers added K to the mix so that you would get a more genuine black. And K actually stands for black. So they add different portions of black to that dark, muddy color to get that deeper black that people want for their print projects. So you can see the two here and how they work. Basically, the colors combining are similar, but it is just a difference in the mode that it's going to be used. And CMYK is also subtractive colors, and that's where you get the black. So my suggestion to you when you're working with CMYK is to always get a print proof because the colors vary quite dramatically sometimes when you're converting from RGB to CMYK, even more so because you're actually looking at CMYK, CMYK colors on a computer screen that displays things in RGB. So most of the time, if you stick with the right colors, you're going to be okay, but you always want to get that printer proof just to make sure everything turned out the way it should. So what does this mean for our programs? Well. Instead of having to go through and take all of your photos that you're using for your project and converting them to CMYK if they're originally in RGB, this is also true if you're working on a huge project like a magazine and you're getting sources from all over the place. You don't have to sit there and go, all right, which one is RGB, which one is CMYK, and what do I need to convert? You don't have to actually do that. Uh, InDesign will do that for you when you're done with your project, which is great. Now, one thing to note, you want to make sure over here in your colors, you want to make sure those are all CMYK. InDesign is great because you can switch between the two. You can create RGB or CMYK, CMYK colors, but you want to make sure that it's always CMYK and when you're choosing your colors accordingly. You have a variety of colors to choose from, but you can see that they're not as vibrant as if you picked things that were RGB. See how much more vibrant RGB is? Now in the print world, it's okay. Usually when you have your final piece, it still is very vibrant. But when you compare the two is when you can really see the difference. So just make sure that your colors are CMYK because you don't want to rely on converting everything if you can get away with it. But for those items that you don't want to do by hand, you can get away with that at the end. So I have a project here, which is actually my portfolio. This is actually what my printed portfolio would look like. It's broken out into all my different areas. Most of these are CMYK, but some things aren't. So if I don't want to go through and find out which, which is which, I can just save this out in my PDF. So if we go to File, Export, and I'm going to select this because I already have it made up, and click Save here. If you go to your output, this is the key. There's a color conversion and a destination. Your destination is the color mode that you want to convert to. So here I always just have convert to destination and then preserve these numbers selected. And our destination is our CMYK, and that's what the document is. 
So we can see that it's US web coded swap version two. And you have a bunch of different options down here for different scenarios. But if you're in the US and you want a standard CMYK, this would be it. Now notice that it says document and working. This is where you can go up here to edit and see your color settings and you define this. So you have an RGB setting and a CMYK setting. And here you can see that we have our US web coded. So when you select that, that's where the option comes up in your final PDF. And you can preserve your numbers here as well. Uh, you also have options for RGB. sRGB is for the web and Adobe RGB is actually the standard um, RGB to use. Uh, but usually you'll find your web graphics have this sRGB. So this is where you select it under color settings under your edit menu to tell the document how you're going to use your colors, your CMYK and your RGB. And when you're ready to export to your PDF is when you can say, okay, we're gonna convert everything to CMYK. And this is the CMYK that I chose under my settings. However, like you can choose other ones if you want to. So when you hit okay and you export this, and I'm just exporting one page here real quick to show you, you can see what it actually looks like. And it looks pretty good, okay? So it matches what we originally had because most of these, like I said, were CMYK to begin with. But this gives you an idea of what your final image is going to look like. Now you can double check a PDF to see what color mode it's using if you have Acrobat by going to Advanced Print Production and Preflight. Go to PDF Analysis and scroll down here and you can list everything that's not CMYK. Now, because we converted everything to CMYK, you shouldn't have any problems show up. But if you get something from somebody else, this is a quick way to see how they formatted that and see what shows up as CMYK and what doesn't. So that is how to do that in InDesign with PDFs. Photoshop, here's a photo we have just to show you what happens with something that isn't just flat colors. Here it is as RGB. Okay, we could see it's got some great color, great contrast, but if we want that to be CMYK, go over here to mode CMYK color and boom. Now you can really see the difference between how vivid it is one between the other. This is CMYK, this is RGB. RGB is a lot darker, has a lot more contrast. CMYK, it's actually a little bit more flat and a little brighter. Now you can go back through and adjust your levels and your brightness and contrast to bring that back down. That works as well. But you can see the difference between the two uh, when you have photos that have a lot more colors that make up that photo versus solid colors. So then you can go ahead and save this out as a JPEG, TIFF, whatever you want to, and you're ready to go. Uh, but just know that when you're working with InDesign, the great thing is you don't have to go through and convert all of your elements to CMYK by hand if you don't want to. You could do it all at once with a final save, but it's really important to look and see the difference between the colors when you do that. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks again to the Cork Sailor for his great tip. And until next time, please subscribe and it'll keep you up to date with all the latest episodes that we release here at Design Like a Pro. Leave comments below if you have questions, concerns, need more details about what we talked about, that's fine. I'll do my best to answer those. You can always send great ideas to ideas at NikkiHeart.com and I will do my best to feature those in an upcoming episode. Until next time, thanks for watching.